January this year has five Sundays in it. Whenever we have a month with five Sundays, we like to make the fifth Sunday of the month what we call a family fifth Sunday. In other words, we don't have children's uh, programming in children's church. Children are encouraged to uh, sit with their families and experience worship. And as a result, I usually like to try to make Family Fifth Sunday extra family friendly. And so the message that you're hearing this morning is uh, adapted from uh, Matthew 5, verses 38 through 48. Uh, so adults, if you want to dig a little deeper, I'd encourage you to read that yourself. But uh, uh, let's uh, go on a ride together in, a, in, a, in talking about what Jesus taught in that part of the Bible uh, in a way that's, that's kid-friendly as well as adult-friendly. And so I want to start by showing you this picture of a collection of road signs. So look at some of these road signs. Uh, they all are uh, communicating some type of rule to people who are driving along the road. You know, you've got a stop sign there. If you come to a stop sign, it means that you're supposed to come to a complete stop, look and make sure that no vehicles are coming, and then you can go on through. Now, uh, there's a no U-turn symbol. That means that uh, you, you, know, you can't uh, stop in the middle of the road and turn around and go the opposite direction. There's a no passing zone, which means that you can't go around the car in front of you because it's not safe. Um, there's a do not enter sign. You're not supposed to go that direction. Uh, there's one that uh, shows a person walking. That means you got to watch out for people who might be crossing the street. There's a one way sign indicating that um, you want to go the direction of that arrow and not the opposite. There's a railroad crossing sign. There's a speed limit sign. And all of these signs indicate, well, not all of them, not Interstate 95, for instance, but most of them indicate some sort of, of rule or expectation. But here's the thing. The, the, the reason behind, there is a reason behind each and every one of these signs, and most of them is to keep us safe. Because if you go the wrong way on a one-way street, you might run into somebody. If you don't stop uh, and make sure that no one else is coming, uh, you could get in a car accident. On a matter of fact, a lot of these things are, if you're not careful and aware and following the rules or the expectations, somebody could get hurt. But here's the thing. Sometimes... We like to find ways to kind of work around the rules to get what we want. Suppose I'm in a hurry and I come to a stop sign, but I don't make sure that somebody that nobody's coming, and so I just stop and then go through the intersection without checking to see if other cars are coming. I could get in an accident. Yeah, technically I stopped, but I didn't pay attention to the point of the stop sign. The point of the stop sign is stop, look around, and make sure nobody's coming before you continue. And, and, and so that's an example of how we human beings like to work around the rules to get what we want. Let me give you another example. If your mom says, don't hit your brother, and you kick or punch him, well, you didn't, you didn't hit him, you kicked or you punched him, right? Well, the point, of course, was don't hurt your brother. But we do that all the time. We miss the point of the rules, and we like to work around the rules. And for that reason, Jesus had to come and set a lot of people straight. You see, a long time before Jesus came, there was a man named Moses. And God gave Moses rules to give to his people. But here's the thing, a lot of times the people missed the point of the rules. And the point was always to love and help each other. 
That was always the point of the rules. The whole time, the point of the rules was for us to love and to help each other. But a lot of people decided to obey maybe what the rules said in, in one way, but they found ways to go around the rule and still get what they wanted anyway. And they totally missed the point of the rule, just like in that example. And so Jesus had to come and remind us, hey, look, if you're trying to work around the rules to still get your way, you're kind of missing the point of the rules in the first place. And uh, an example of one of the ways he pointed that out, he, he said, you have heard that it was said, love your enemy, hate your neighbor. Now, when he said the love your neighbor, I'm sorry, whoa, I got that way backwards, didn't I? He said, love your neighbor, hate your enemy. But uh, here's the thing. When he said the thing about loving your neighbor, Jesus was actually quoting a rule that God gave to Moses a long time before. But the part where uh, the hate your enemy part, Moses had never given God's people that rule. So apparently by the time of Jesus, people had come to think that neighbor doesn't include the people you don't like or the people who don't like you. Moses never said hate your enemy, but apparently the people of Jesus' time were saying that Moses did teach that. And so Jesus is like, no, no. Neighbor doesn't just mean people you like or people who are like you. Neighbor is everybody including, and this may surprise you, including your enemy. Because Jesus goes on to say this. He says, don't fight an evil person. He says, love your enemies. Pray for those who hurt you. Jesus made it clear that your neighbor is whoever is around you, even if it's your enemy, even if it's somebody who doesn't like you, who is mean to you, or who you don't like, that you find unpleasant to be around, that person you are still supposed to love. Now, why, you might ask? Because that's how God loves people. We are to love all people, even our enemies. There's this story that Jesus told, and I, I want to share that story with you. And in this story, we see an example of a man who was in trouble. And the people who should have helped him, the people who knew better and knew it was the right thing to do to help him, didn't. But then that man's enemy ended up helping him. Let's listen to this story. This is Jesus, who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. You see, when Jesus was on earth, he wanted everyone to know what God thought about things. So he took every opportunity to teach people about God's heart. <clears throat> One day, a religious expert stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? <laughs> what does the law say? The man answered, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Do this and you will live. Wait. The man then asked, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. Ah! They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. <laughs> by chance, a priest came along. <laughs> but when he saw the man lying there, Ugh, yuck. he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. 
La 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 la. Wow! Another man who worked in the temple, who was called a Levite, walked over and looked at him lying there. He's out. Uh, huh? But he also passed by on the other side. Then a Samaritan came along. Ah. Yeah. Samaritans were hated by Jews. They were seen as lesser people, and Jews would not interact with them. But when the Samaritan saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his donkey and took him to an inn, where he took care of him. One room, please. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, "Take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here." Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits? The man replied. The one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, "Yes. Now go and do the same." Here's the thing that you need to know to understand this story: Jewish people and Samaritan people were very unkind to each other back then. And in Jesus' story, the Samaritan took care of the Jewish man, even though he was his enemy. That's what real love. Is real love is showing kindness to all people, even our enemies. That means people who annoy you, like your little brother or sister, people who are different from you, people even, and you might be surprised at this one, even people who are unkind to you, even people who are mean to you. Now understand that doesn't mean that you have to let them be mean to you. You don't have to be best buddies or best friends or hang around somebody who's not kind to you. But you don't have to be mean back to them either. That's the point. Even people who are mean, we don't want bad things to happen to them. Even though they make other people suffer, that doesn't mean we want them to suffer. It means. Loving them means wanting good things for them, even though they may not want good things for us. That is what it means to love our enemies. And like I said, the reason we're supposed to love like that is because God loves like that. I want to show you another video, and this is another video about a story that Jesus told. I want you to pay attention to the kind of love this father has for his younger son. Jesus taught everyone about God's love. All kinds of people would come to hear Jesus speak, including tax collectors and people who made bad choices. This made the Pharisees and Jewish leaders mad. Ah, yuck! They didn't think that Jesus should be around these kind of people. So Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, "Um, excuse me, I want my share of your estate now before you die." Okay. So his father agreed and gave his son his inheritance. A woohoo! A few days later, this younger son packed all his belongings, see ya, and moved to a distant land. And there he wasted all his money in wild living. Huh? About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land. Ah、oh, man! And he began to starve. Hey you! He convinced a local farmer to hire him. Thank God. And the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the food he was feeding the pigs looked good to him. 
but no one gave him anything. Finally, he said to himself, At home even the servants have food enough to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. I know. I will go home to my father and apologize and ask him to take me on as a servant. So he returned home to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son. Sir! His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to the servants, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet, and kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast, for this son of mine was dead and now has returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. Hurrah, yeah! Meanwhile, the older son was in the fields working. When he returned home, he heard music and dancing in the house. Huh? Hey, you! And he asked one of the servants what was going on. Your brother is back, he was told, and your father has killed the fattened calf. We are celebrating because of his safe return. Woohoo! All right! Party time! All right! Yahoo! The older brother was angry and wouldn't go in. His father came out and begged him. Ah, oh, man! But he replied, All these years I've slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing you told me to. And in all that time, you never gave me even one young goat for a feast with my friends. Yet when this son of yours comes back after wasting your money, you celebrate by giving him a great feast. His father said to him, Look, dear son, you have always stayed by me, and everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate this happy day, for your brother was dead and has come back to life. He was lost, but now... He is found. Did the younger son in the story make a good decision or a bad decision? Did he make good decisions or bad decisions? Bad decisions, right? He took half, well, I guess about a third of his dad's money, which he wasn't supposed to get until his dad died, and then he went off and wasted it on a bunch of of. of well, stuff he didn't really need, stuff that might have been fun at the time, but it he he spent all of his money until he had nothing left, and then when things got bad and there wasn't enough food to go around, he was basically starving. His dad was pro probably would have hated to know that his son was going through that, but it was his own bad choices that got him there. But Here's the question I have for you. Here's the other question I have for you. Even though this son made all of these bad choices, did the dad love him anyway? Yeah, he did. And God loves that way too. Jesus says that he causes his son to shine on evil people and good people. He sends rain on those who do right and on those who don't. God loves all people and wants good things for them, whether they make good choices or bad ones. And so when Jesus tells us to love our neighbor, our neighbor is not just the people we like. Our neighbor is not just the people who are like us. Our neighbor includes even our enemies, people who are, are, are uh, not like us, people who get on our nerves, people who are mean to us. God cares about giving that person good things, and so should we. doesn't mean we have to let them be mean to us, but it does mean that we shouldn't want them to suffer or have somebody be mean to them. Loving other people means wanting good things for them. It means being sad when they make bad choices and have to suffer because of their bad choices or being sad that they cause other people to suffer because of their bad choices. But it doesn't mean that we stop 
wanting good things for them. That's how God loves. And so that's the way Jesus taught us to love. To love like God does. Just like the Father in that story. Let's pray. God, when other people are unkind to us, when other people get on our nerves, what we really want to do is make them feel what they made us feel. Jesus taught us to be different. Jesus taught us to love all people, even those who do wrong. We want what is good for all people, both those who make good choices and those who don't. Yeah, we, we don't have to let ourselves be, be victims of other people's meanness and cruelty. But we shouldn't be mean and cruel back to them. That is not the way that you love, and that's not the way that you want us to love. Help us to love like you. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to sing a song together called God of Grace and God of Glory. It's a song that has us praying that God would teach us how to love like he does. It means asking him to give us the power to love like he does, not to be so worried about ourselves and, and, and more worried about the good of everybody, not just what's good for ourselves. So let's sing this song together. God of grace and God of glory, on thy people pour thy power. Ground thine ancient church's story, bring her bud to glorious flower. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour. For the facing of this hour. Lo, the hosts of evil round us scorn thy Christ, assail his ways. Fears and doubts too long have bound us, free our hearts to work and praise. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour. For the living of these days. Cure thy children's warring madness. Spend our pride to thy control. Shame our want and selfish gladness. Rich in things and poor in soul. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, lest we miss thy kingdom's goal. Lest we miss thy kingdom's goal. Save us from weak resignation to the evils we deplore. Let the search for thy salvation be our glory evermore. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, serving the whom we adore. Serving thee whom we adore. And now as you go about your week, may you learn to love like God loves you and all peoples of the world, both those who make good decisions and those who do not. May you love all people and seek the good of all people, whether they be your friend or your enemy, may you count them as a neighbor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.